Good. I'm recording. Okay, I'm also recording. Okay, hello everybody. Uh, and welcome to our last uh, talk for the fourth uh, iCraft full day workshop on uh, real world deployment of leg robots. And I'm very happy today to have uh, uh, a, a new speaker for our workshop from uh, um, uh, it is Jing, Jing Yu from uh, the Deep Robotics uh, company uh, and he will speak uh, to us about uh, their exciting new uh, quadrupedal, a set of quadrupedal robots uh, for uh, real world applications. Uh, thanks a lot uh, Jing, Yu for, Jing Yu for, the, for, for, the, um, uh, for coming and uh, virtually speaking to, to our workshop. Thanks a lot. Uh, please uh, share your screen and uh, uh, we'll answer all the questions. You will be able to answer all the questions in the end of the talk. Okay. Right? Uh, hello everyone, welcome to my talk today. My name is uh, Liu Jingyu from Deep Robotics. I am work as a locomotion algorithm engineer in Deep Robotics and uh, I got my master degree in table development and my study was uh, basically focused on the state estimation and uh, control theory and applications. And I'm here to speak on behalf of uh, Dr. Zhu Qiuguo, who's the assistant professor at Zhejiang University, and also the founder and CEO of our company. <clears throat> but uh, very unfortunately, he's busy with something else. So I'm going to do the talk instead. And first of all, I want to say thanks to the organizer and host of ICRA. Uh, in this special time, it takes a lot of efforts to host a meeting online. So let's get started. My talk today is uh, <coughs> real world applications on Zhuiying. It uh, will be divided into four parts, which are introduction of the company and the introduction of the products, the ideas of our applications, and uh, other some other developments. And uh, our company company is a startup company founded in 2017. And uh, earlier before that, uh, Dr. Zhu Qiuguo did his research on leg robots that is based on the state key lab of the industri industry control technology at Zhejiang University. And uh, we can see in this picture, uh, there are two series of the robots uh, has been developed. Uh, one is the uh, one leg series, and uh, we all know that uh, the one leg series uh, is uh, the basic of basics when you want to develop a quadruped or humanoid series. And uh, you can verify your series and some other things in the one leg series to do a lot of practice on it. And uh, I want to introduce the Wukong humanoid series, we can see in the top, uh, top left, the white one. He's holding a ping pong bat. And uh, it was the first robot that can play in ping pong with people. It was in 2012. Uh, it can also kick back a spin ball. It was amazing in that time. And uh, in the right, in the top right, the two second generation of Wukong can run faster. It's around, it can run around like uh, four kilograms per hour. And it also became more and more stable. It uh, was also the first uh, humanoid robot that can run this fast uh, in China Milan. And then let me introduce our products. Uh, reveal the imagination about robots are uh, our slogans of our uh, company. And uh, basically we have uh, three different types of our product, the Dream Mini, Dream and uh, Dream Pro. Uh, here we go with the Dream Mini. It's uh, small and uh, it has a uh, low weight. Uh, this small the dimensions are measured when he is uh, standing and it's all, also cost effective. And we believe that uh, this small quadruped robot uh, can 
uh, can be very good for the research and the development because uh, it's cheap and it's all equipped with this uh, lidar and the cameras. It can all be option uh, equipped with with this sensors, and you can verify your control theory of the locomotion, or you want to do some uh, deep learning on it, or you want to do some slam or algorithm on it. It can all be done. And uh, let's see a video about the uh, Dream Mini. It can walk and running, short running with a full flat face and uh, also bounding on the gravel roads, not a big deal. Bounding on the gravel road is not a big deal. And the up steps and down steps is also not a big deal. And uh, because uh, thanks to his uh, small size, can go very narrow spaces like this. Uh, for example, in the industrial side, uh, pipe or something else. It can also keep balance after a disturbance and uh, can do the autonomous navigation. And uh, the front cameras can recognize the human's body gesture as the spastic orders and uh, react uh, with uh, different movements like uh, going forward and back forward and get down. And uh, when he fell down, he can also get up by himself. That's our Jing Mini, the smallest uh, robot of ours. And here we go with uh, our Jing Pro. It's a full scale carpet robot for specific applications. Specific applications, we mean you can, you have to add a uh, a lot of uh, accessories on it. Thanks to its uh, high torque motors on the joint, it, the payload of this robot can be more than 30 kilograms. And it, can, it also has a very long endurance. We have tested it. It can walk uh, more than 12 kilograms without uh, no pass at all. And uh, if you want to add some uh, like a robot arm or a professional camera pen, it's uh, it's gonna be very heavy. So you can put it on the top of this type of robot. And uh, let me introduce our the project that we are under development. The robot uh, Dream Pro with an arm. And as far as I know, it's gonna be the first uh, robot with an arm on it in China Million. And uh, theoretically, the one arm, one robot arm uh, weighs like uh, six to eight kilograms. So theoretically, we can add two arms on it, but it's going to be very uh, not uh, so good looking. <sighs> Let's see some videos of our past. It was in 2017 the early type of our quadruped robot. It can step uh, aside and uh, we, we were allowed to kick it uh, in that time, not right now. And it can keep balance after a kick, after a drag also. And uh, it was in Tibet, in very high altitude. After he stepped on a rock, it got slippery, but he can balance itself uh, very quickly. And it also can do the navigations on both indoor and outdoors. Uh, this was outdoors. And this are uh, basically all the old, old videos. Uh, that's our first uh, generation of the navigation. Uh, this the videos are all speed up, speed it up because you can see it move. It's not like uh, in the real time. Oh, okay. Let's see uh, another video. More earlier, uh, not more earlier, more recent. It was in two thousand eighteen. Uh, 
as far as I know, it was the first robot in China mainland that can do this uh, jump charting running with a full flat face. And also can get up the stairs. Also the first robot in China mainland can do this. And even though there are some small obstacles on the stairs, it can get up the stairs. And uh, the height of the stairs are around like uh, 10 centimeters. So here we go with our standard product drain, and also the star product of us is a middle-sized quadruped robot, and we plan to use it for some real industrial applications. I'm gonna introduce it uh, later in the following, and it can be very highly customized. The customer can choose whatever he wants want to add to this uh, robot, uh, as long as he can he can afford it and he can. As the robot can take to carry this weight, and uh, we can offer various interfaces. And it's uh, after this uh, year's uh, uh, development, it uh, collected a lot of uh, experience in various uh, practical applications. I'm gonna talk it uh, in the following. First, let's see what we have as the default settings. We got a radar in the top top front and we got uh, three cameras in the front in the back and uh, also in the belly uh, what uh, the belly camera is for i'm gonna talk about uh, later with uh, the video and we saw also we got two hosts on board one for the perception and the one for the motion control let's see the video see it's uh, it's bounding through raptor ray and it so also can jump very high and very long through a circle. It's a, more than 1.5 meters in distance. And uh, it can also recognize another robot as the obstacles and avoid, avoid the contact, then replan a new path to his station. See, see there, the belly camera is used for the uh, to get a better information about his position, and he can so that he can land down and control his uh, body position to land down accurate to that uh, plug in, so that he can get charged. And then uh, let me let me introduce our ideas of the applications. First problem is that uh, why do we do inspections with the robot? The first pro is uh, it's a big market. If you Google transformer substation in China mainland, you will get this. It's more than thousands of it. And in every, of, every one of this uh, substation, there are two or three personals that are in charge of the inspection manually inspection and uh, in the beginning of the product uh, we hear a lot of complaints about uh, how the how boring their work is so inspection with robot it can liberate human from the repetitive work from the boring work and uh, after a few trainings uh, the the robot can give a uh, a relatively reliable diagnos diagnosis about the trouble and about the instrument or equipment. And it's also very cost effective compared with uh, hiring a real human. But it also has some uh, dis disadvantages like uh, great difficulty, great difficulty, and the great difficulty. So all the troubles cost with the uh, difficulties because when a robot uh, step out a uh, lab it the things are getting different the environment is uh, not so ideal and not so 
good as in the lab. So we faced a lot of this uh, very practical and uh, project uh, problems, but uh, we have fixed them and uh, we are processing. And this is the routine of the inspection of uh, electrical substation. First of all, we have to build a map of the real thing, use the uh, LIDAR information, and then we're gonna define some tasks where the robot is going to do a routine inspection, daily routine inspection, or it's gonna do a specific uh, inspection to, uh, to go to the specific uh, place uh, to check the state of uh, equipment or a uh, uh, or an uh, instrument. And uh, after the task definition, the robot can build a, a, plan, a plan pass to go to the right place. And uh, then the robot uh, do the autonomous navigation when he moving. And uh, when the robot uh, goes to the right place, and uh, he will adjust uh, his uh, body position to let the cameras or the meters, telemeters to have a good direction to the object and then do the object detection and take pictures and uh, information or data of the in instrument and then to upload the all the data and the information to the to the cloud and uh, we will do some data data analysis uh, uh, with this uh, data. Uh, so let's see the videos of the real applications. The mission started and then here he came to a OU level meter and take the pictures. And then he left and getting on a road shoulder and walking through grassland to another place to take some photos and data with, with these meters. It's a thermometer and he can do the autonomous navigation in, in this place and to check whether the switch are in their right places. And also this kind of uh, equipped equipment. Okay. The applications was introduced, finished, and uh, some other developments also has been developed, like uh, like this, the localization under very very strong shakes. Uh, let's see it first. Yeah, we can see when uh, because we know the robot when he's moving or doing some uh, uh, particular projects, the body can move very under very strong shake. But uh, when you in this, when the robot in this kind of state, how the robot can um, uh, can navigate and locally local his uh, positions in the in, in the environment, it's uh, it's a tough task because we have a uh, we have a met a problem with uh, when when the robot uh, want to get up a uh, uh, low shoulder. After a slippery, the robot cannot fall, but gonna slide away with a, with a very quick uh, speed. And uh, in that time, sometimes the robot can lose his navigation, lose his localization. And uh, when we do this, after we have done this, the robot can, uh, can still localization itself in, when, when he got a slippery. And this is a run, running simulation by the reinforcement learning. After 500 
2000 to 12 uh, training cycles, the robot can run like this. And this, the running gates uh, like our robot. It's trained for the bounding. Yeah, after that, uh, we have trained it for the in the regular terrace. After, after a few trainings, the robot can run very quickly and very stable. And uh, that's it. My talk is uh, finished. And uh, thanks for your attention and time. And if you have uh, further questions, I'm glad here. I'm here to glad to answer it. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Jingyu. Uh, Thank you. Too. This was a this was a really really nice uh, talk. Uh, Thank very, you. Very, very cool things. Um, okay, everybody, if you have questions, please feel free to start uh, asking them in the chat. Uh, we 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 got some questions from. Uh, our side so let, let me go one by one uh, okay the first question is actually about the bipedal robot the w Wukong uh, so Marco no. is wondering um, uh, that we have not seen too much information and too many videos regarding this robot I mean can we find some information about the information about the, uh, the, the humanoid robot the Wukong yeah, of course. Uh, but uh, actually, it was developed uh, in uh, before two thousand twelve. Uh, I'm wonder. I'm wondering that maybe there's not so much uh, videos uh, and uh, pictures on the internet. But uh, I'm sure that uh, uh, Doctor Zhu Qiuguo has some of this. Uh, All right. Okay. You, uh, you you showed also a newer version, no? I, I thought it was a two thousand eighteen version. No, in your slide. Oh, uh, you 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 mean the the second generation, right? Yes. Oh, uh, the second generation. Yes, they are they, they are developing it right now with the pro progress. Uh, uh, let me see. Maybe maybe on his uh, on the homepage of the university, maybe you can uh, find some. But it's uh, all in the media's uh, place. Uh, it's hard to uh, it's hard to organize this information together, you know. But if you are really really interested, uh, we can uh, I can ask uh, Dr. Zhu Xiuguo to right. offer some. Uh, no, it's very, like because, to it's very interesting because it's very interesting because I don't know. Also, Marco, but I, I didn't have any idea that uh, this humanoid exists actually. So and it is from, really and especially <laughs> especially from the pictures, it looks uh, looks like a great product already. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, but right. it was uh, basically uh, mainly developed in, in, in the university, and uh, right now we are a company, so we basically develop the Caterpillar robot. All right. Okay. Okay. So uh, another question from Marco is, and if you can talk about this, I'm not sure. Uh, what is the price of the quadrupedal ro robots? What is the, um, the the scale the of price. the price? Uh, it it depends because. Uh, that all depends the, the small one the large one and uh, depends on what kind of options you want to choose but uh, uh, let me see it's around uh, you use dollars right yes, yes. let's say yes let me turn and appro it. approximation i mean is it closer to 50k Close to 100k 000. 200k it's around five 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 thousand dollars Oh, oh, maybe cheaper. Maybe cheaper. Uh, I'm not sure because I'm not doing the market part. Okay. Okay. Are you selling? Are you selling worldwide now, or only in China? Yeah, not not only in China. We have some uh, partners in Europe, but uh, I'm not sure that we have partners with uh, in, in in USA. All right. But we are planning to sell it uh, worldwide. All right. Perfect. All right. Uh, let me see. I mean, one question from my side was that, uh, of course, maybe you, you, it is something that you develop now the arm on the robot. So this is uh -huh. this is a nice, interesting idea that I know a lot of people in, uh, you know, in uh, quadrupedal robots, 
are trying to develop. I mean, we have seen also from Boston Dynamics, Animal yeah. also, Haiku, et cetera. Um, is this a challenging thing? I mean, uh, putting, uh, including the dynamics of the arm in the controller, does, does this make the whole control uh, much more difficult, you think? Yeah, yeah, of course it makes the controller much difficulter. And, uh, you know, when the robot uh, has an arm, the arm has very uh, various uh, configurations. And uh, under every configuration, the robot uh, must to balance himself as as euro. That means that you have to, uh, you, the robot must know how the configuration of the robot of the arm and uh, balance itself uh, according, accordingly. And uh, and even though even it's a, it became much more difficult when the robot arm gets something in his hand, you know, it change changes the initial momentum uh, totally so we right. are un, uh, we are under development all right great okay i mean we look forward for this we, it looked it looked nice in the videos thank you all thank right. you very much what, one one question also from marco is uh, if you can tell us a little bit more about the locomotion controller uh, is it based on optimization uh, methods mpc any learning based controller okay it's uh, it's various. Uh, in my uh, personal point of view, I think the MPC controller that is uh, very good for the very high dynamic uh, motions. When you want to do uh, very fast runnings, or when you're gonna step a, a step a stone or something like this, it can keep balance. And the MPC controller is very good. And uh, when we do the uh, do the bounding. As you can see in the video, when when the robot does bounding, we use a MPC controller. But in other places, we use our original traditional controller, like the virtual force. You know, just a, a virtual mo virtual model of the robot, and to keep it balanced. And uh, we think it's uh, very good to differ the methods from uh, the option uh, from the missions that uh, you want to achieve all right okay uh great i think the other one the questions about the path planning i think you answered this i mean i've seen it later um okay so another question is uh, what do you think is the advantage of of your selling point compared to other quadrupedal robot companies i mean what what is the advantage of of um, this particular, um, you know, robot and the capabilities mm -hmm. uh, compared to other, probably compared to other, um, uh, to to other companies around this area. Okay. Yeah. Uh, recently, there's uh, many, many more uh, companies yes. are doing the quadrupedal robot, and uh, we are glad to see that, and we want to promote this process of the development of the quadrupedal robot and uh, we can all take advantage from this uh, progress, right? And uh, if you're talking about the differences, I don't, I don't see much differences about the, the quadrupedal. It all has four legs and uh, also can do the things. And uh, what we want to do, and they want to do it uh, uh, too. You, you know what I mean? Yeah, we want to do the applications and they want to do the applications too. And, right. uh, I, I think it's a good atmosphere. We can compare with uh, each other and uh, all right, uh, and compact with each other. You know. <laughs> all right, that's fair. That's fair. How, how big is is the company? How many people? How many people? It's uh, it's around thirty. Oh, per person. you're you're quite a big company actually. All yeah, right. we we grow, we grow. <laughs> all right, no, that's uh, that's nice. Uh, uh, one question from uh, Ming Shun Ang. Um, uh, can you talk about the interesting uh, uh, tibia design, the curve, compared to other quadrupeds straight? Uh, seems like it could be useful with the touchdown angle, but it's pretty significant in your uh, uh, in your experience. I'm not sure which part of the robot he's talking about. I think it's the last link that he mentions, the tibia link, the curve of the tibia link. I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't get what your question is. 
I, I think the question is regarding the last link of your quadrupedal robot that's had, that, uh, that has okay. a curved um, structure rather than straight and what your advantages are regarding that. Last link. Yeah, it, it's, it's a curved link rather than a straight body. What are the reasons for that? Yes, basically why in the legs the, the, the last link is, is more curved rather than, you know, like uh, the, the classic straight, uh, straight links of the, of, uh, the other quadrupedals. Does this give you an advantage on, uh, on the locomotion? Uh, I, I'm sorry, I didn't do this part of the job because this uh, was uh, developed by another colleague. I'm, I'm not. All right, I'm so this is a sure. more mechanical design uh, question. Okay, all right, okay. okay. All right, okay. and uh, I think, let me see. Uh, oh, I do have two, two last questions. One is mm -hmm. so when, when we talk about this inspection job, um, there is an interesting idea of, you know, when you have to convince people to use robots over mm -hmm. just uh, you know several cameras around the building so uh, you know my question is do you see any advantage of really having a robot that you know goes around some buildings rather than putting some just fixed cameras and then running yeah. some uh, inspection with fixed cameras do you see some advantage is it more yeah. to make things more general maybe or um, yeah, uh, that's a good question. And uh, when, when, when we use a robot uh, walking around uh, a building and uh, with the cameras, if, if you can add a camera in the fixed position, it it's definitely can be a good choice. But you have to think about it. Uh, uh, the robot with the ca camera, it's like, a, it's like a human takes a camera. And uh, the robot, uh, you can save a lot of cameras because when you you use a fixed uh, position camera, you some many many of the places you want to uh, you want to monitor, right? If you have a robot with a camera on on it, you can use the robot to travel around, and uh, you just uh, use one dot and one camera. You can cover all the places that uh, in your building. Right, I do agree. I mean, uh, it's, it's, and I guess like with inspection, it goes also the question of maintenance. So, you know, like it, at some point you will not only need to inspect things, but, uh, you know, you need to, you know, touch some things or, you know, like uh, have a physical contact with uh, some structures that, uh, you know, a camera cannot do it by itself. So you need somebody, uh, a robot or a human to, to make this contact. All right. Okay, and the, the last question from my side is, uh, oh, this is regarding the last slides uh, about uh, the, the simulated environment. Um, uh, do you see any difficulty on training the um, reinforcement learning network in simulation? I don't know which simulator you are using. Uh, how do you apply this on the, on the real robot? Is it an easy sim to real uh, control tra tra transferability? Uh, or you train directly uh, on the robot? Okay, okay. Uh, this running simulations, we, we, we didn't apply the control theory in our real robot. And, uh, but uh, we have some uh, cooperation project uh, with uh, other universities. And uh, when, when, they, when they do something about the standing up with the uh, uh, reinforcement learning, and we have tested it on our real robot, but uh, the, the, the papers of there, it's not uh, published yet, so all right. we, we feel it's not good to show the videos to you guys. All right, okay, sounds, sounds reasonable. All right, so from my side, that's it. Marco, do we have anything else? Uh, from, my, uh, wait. from my side, it's also good. All yes. right, okay, thank perfect. You. Thank you a lot for this talk. Uh, yes, thank you too, uh, thank you very much. Thank you, thanks a lot. I mean, it was um, the, the grand finale, so this was a really nice talk for the as a last talk for the for our workshop and uh, let's hope that the uh, next year i think next year icra is in china so let's hope if it if things go well that we can all meet okay. in, uh, all, we can all meet in china and uh, you know we can run this workshop with our robot so you guys are gonna be in china right 
uh, let's hope if travels are, are going to be uh, happening in a year from now. Uh, I hope that you know, ICRA will, will be able to, to host us in physically in China. Okay. I think it's in China, right, Marco? I think it's in China. I think so. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Yeah. All right. Okay. So uh, with okay. this, I would like to thank also the participants for um, attending and uh, we'll upload everything on YouTube for, uh, for everybody to, to watch later. All right. Okay. So I'm stopping the recording.